Hello there, it's Juliana Michaels and welcome to my channel. Today I've got a mixed media Christmas card to share with you using some of the new products from the recent Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous Christmas 2023 release. And I'm sharing how to create a cracked glass effect with an oldie but a goodie product that I had forgotten all about until I saw Kath Stewart using it for a project she made. Ultra Thick Embossing Powder. I had to do a little searching to find it and was able to locate it at my local scrapbook store, Scrapbook Superstation. And I just recently saw that Diane Revely released Dilusion's Diamond Rocks, which is ultra thick embossing powder, but in a rainbow of colors, as well as a clear one like the one that I'm using here. So I'm happy to say it's back and I can't wait to use it more frequently on my upcoming projects. Anyone else out there remember using UTEE back in the day? If you're interested in the supplies I've used to create this card, you can find links to them in the description box below. When you shop through those links, it supports me, and as always, I really appreciate that so very much. There is a blog post available as well with more photos if you're interested in looking at the card up close and in more detail. Now let's get on with the making. In this video, I'm going to be using some of the new stamps and stencils from the recent Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous Christmas 2023 release. And the two stamp sets that I'm going to be working with are the Winter Woodlands, such a gorgeous set, and the Jolly Holiday stamp set, which I absolutely love the vintage retro style of this. It's one of my favorites for sure. And then I'm going to be working with the Twinkle stencil from the mini set 57. I'm also going to be using some older Christmas stamp sets and one that isn't Christmassy. I'm going to be using the little 25 here from the Poinsettia set. And from Tiny Toadstools, I'm going to be using the specimen label and the little script images. And from Holiday Things, I'm going to be using this uh, pine branch. As for the die sets, I'm going to be using the specimen slide from the Tim Holtz specimen die set. And I'm going to be using some greenery pieces from the Tim Holtz Festive Gatherings and Mini Holiday Greens die sets. So to get started, I'm working with a piece of distressed watercolor paper in my stamping platform. I'm stamping this image from the Winter Woodland stamp set with clear embossing ink because I want to heat emboss the image. And because this stamp isn't quite large enough to cover the entire piece of paper, I'm stamping it on one side here. Now I'm going to pour some gold embossing powder over this and use my heat gun to melt the powder. And do be smart about it and move the embossing powder out of the way while you are heat embossing. I don't know anyone who might have accidentally bumped the open jar or maybe melted heat embossing powder onto their craft mat. And now I'm going to place the paper back in the stamping platform and stamp the other side of the paper and then heat emboss that with the gold embossing powder. So the next thing I'm going to do is apply some of the sparkle texture paste through this twinkle stencil. This paste tends to be a little on the thinner side, at least to me, so I recommend that you hold it down really well so it doesn't seep underneath the stencil. I'm holding this side of the stencil up so it doesn't mess up the area with the paste I just applied. This paste is still wet at this point. If this is a challenge for you to do or you're nervous about messing it up, 
you can set this to the side to dry and then move on to the next step. And then once it's dry, you can go back and add the rest of the paste. Off camera, I die cut some greenery from various shades of green cardstock using the Tim Holtz Festive Gathering and Mini Holiday Greens die set. And I'm going to add some Distress Snowfall Grit Paste to them. And to make it even more shiny, I'm going to add some rock candy glitter using a glitter duster. Here I'm using a palette knife to apply the grit paste, but you could also just use your finger if you like. I'm just applying it to the ends of the die cut. And then while the paste is still wet, I'm gonna spray it with the glitter duster over my trash can, otherwise it will go everywhere and make a huge mess. It just adds a little more sparkle to it. And now I'm going to set that to the side to dry. And then I'm just gonna repeat that process for the rest of the die cuts. Now I'm gonna do some stamping with archival ink and the colors I'm using are Rustic Wilderness, Fired Brick, Ground Espresso, and Frayed Burlap. These are permanent inks and I'm using them because I don't want to have to worry about the ink bleeding as I go along with the next step. And it's also a great ink for getting nice, clean, stamped images. I'm gonna do some stamping on this specimen slide and on some scrap pieces of paper. And the paper I'm using is Distress Watercolor Paper. And I'm using watercolor paper because in the next steps, I'm going to be doing the ink smushing technique and this paper will stand up to that technique. Here I'm stamping various images from the Winter Woodlands and Jolly Holiday stamp sets. Now I'm going to do some heat embossing for the sentiment, which is from the Jolly Holiday set. But before I do that, I'm going to rub this anti-static pouch over the paper to help keep the embossing powder from sticking where I don't want it to. The ink I'm using is Versamark Watermark Embossing Ink, but any embossing ink will work. And I then pour some gold embossing powder over it. And then use my heat gun to melt the embossing powder. Next up, I'm going to do some stamping on the specimen slide die cut using some images from the Tiny Toadstools and Winter Woodland stamp sets. Here I'm adding the 25 from the Poinsettia set to the little label from the Winter Woodland set. I don't know about you, but I actually really love going through my stash and seeing what stamps I have that can be used together like this. Here I'm adding a little more stamping detail to the specimen slide with a stamp from the Winter Woodland set. Now I'm going to stamp the image that will go inside the specimen slide. For this, I'm using the negative piece that was cut when I die cut the specimen slide. And I'm stamping this greenery image from the Holiday Things stamp set with frayed burlap archival ink. I recommend using a permanent ink for this step so that the ink doesn't bleed when you do the next step. With all the stamping completed, I'm going to custom color the paper using the ink smushing technique and old paper distress ink. So for this technique, all you do is smush the ink pad onto your craft mat, spritz it with some water, and then smush your paper into the ink. As I mentioned earlier, that's why I chose to use watercolor paper. It will hold up well to this technique and the amount of water that is used for it. Once you're finished ink smushing all of the pieces, you can then use your heat tool to dry the ink. To add some color to the greenery image, I decided to use Distress Watercolor Pencils. The colors I'm using are Rustic Wilderness, Peeled Paint, Vintage Photo, and Walnut Stain. When working with the watercolor pencils, I like to use a water brush to lift the ink from the pencil and then apply the color to the paper. I find this gives me a smoother application than if I just try to color directly onto the paper and then add the water. 
If you don't have the Distress Watercolor pencils, you could also use uh, markers or any other type of coloring medium. Next, I'm going to fussy cut all the images I just stamped. Then I'm going to ink the edges of all of them with some vintage photo distress ink. So now I'm going to work with something that I have not used in ages. This is not a new product. It's been around a really long time. In fact, I remember it from way back early on in my early days of crafting. Um, it was called something, maybe it was a different brand even, but it was still an ultra thick embossing powder. And we're going to do a crackled glass technique with this. It is so, so beautiful. So all you're going to need to do this is an embossing ink and a heat gun and of course this ultra thick embossing powder. And what you're going to do is you're just going to apply the embossing ink to the image here. Just get it get a nice coating on there. And you're going to pour. So you can see like this is just way bigger granules than regular embossing powder. Like you can see it here for sure. And We're going to heat emboss this just like normal. And I'm going to bring my glass mat in here so we can work on that. I'm just going to let your heat gun get heated up really well before you begin this process. And we're going to. Let me try to hold it still a little bit here with my... As you can see, like it's already way thicker on there than normal embossing powder. So. While it's still hot, you can pour and do more on there. I like to just kind of repeat like what we did earlier, where I'm just going to add some more embossing ink. And I'm going to pour some more of the powder on there. I'm off screen here, but. And then we're going to heat again. Now you can kind of start to see how it's getting like glass, like thicker and thicker and thicker. So I'm gonna let it cool a second. And then I'm gonna add some more ink and repeat. Adding another layer. Of the powder. And kind of wipe off the edges a little bit if you like. Just go again. Thank you. 
All right, I'm going to do one more layer. Let's see, I got my finger in it. So if that happens, if you do get your finger in it, just re-meet it and help it and your phone. And then just give it a little more time to cool. So now we're gonna sit this to the side and let it completely cool off because the effect that we're going for can't happen unless you let it cool. So to clean your mat, you can use a stamp cleaner or you can use rubbing alcohol. That'll work to get the embossing ink off. And then if you've got this stuck on your craft mat, just take a plastic palette knife and you can just literally just scrape it all off with that. So there's some ways to clean up with the um, ultra thick embossing powder. While the ultra thick embossing powder piece is cooling off, I'm gonna go back to that heat embossed background I created because the paste I applied is now dry. I'm going to be working in a splat box with some Distress Mica Stain and the color I'm using is Fresh Balsam. Just make sure to shake it up really well. You can tell by looking at the bottom of the bottle and making sure that all the mica is mixed in and it's no longer clumped on the bottom before you begin spraying. This will help keep the spray nozzle from getting clogged. And then just spray the paper as desired. And then when you're finished spraying, make sure you wipe off the nozzle because that'll help prevent the clogging as well. After I sprayed the mica stain, I then added some spritzes of water to get the ink moving around. And then I used my heat tool to dry the ink. You can then add some more larger water droplets by slowly squeezing the trigger on the distress sprayer and then you dry it some more. And while it's still wet, you can use a paper towel or a rag to dab dry the water droplets, which will lift off some of the ink. And this just adds more interest and depth to the background. And then just continue to dry the ink with your heat tool until it's completely dry. Once the ink is dry, you want to take a damp paper towel or even a baby wipe and wipe over the paper to lift off the ink from that stenciled area that we did earlier. The spray won't stick to that dried paste, so it will wipe off really easily. And here you can see how the stencil design shows up again once you do that. Next up, I'm just going to ink the edges of my background papers. The finished size of this card is A6, which is four and a half by six and a quarter inches. And the base of the card is a piece of craft cardstock. Now to finish the cracked glass piece. Once the ultra thick embossing enamel is completely cool, the longer you can wait, the better. You take the piece and bend it, and if it's completely cool, it will crack. And you can just crack it as much or as little as you like. To help make the cracks stand out a bit more, I then rubbed my Walnut Stain Distress ink pad over the piece with the idea of getting the ink down into the cracks. I 
I then wiped off the excess with a damp paper towel. In the future, I think I'm going to try this step with distressed crayons and see how that works. I then began assembling the specimen slide, which is just a matter of gluing it together and letting it dry. I then adhered the cracked glass piece to the opening on the slide. And to add some interest and detail, I've decided to add some of the mini fasteners to the corners. There are tiny holes in the die cut, but they only cut the front of the slide. So here I'm working on my magic mat to protect my work surface. And I'm using my die pick to poke holes all the way through so that I can then attach the brads. To get them nice and flat, I'm using the smooth side of my distress hammer to push down on them. I then carefully trim off the excess with my scissors, but please be careful doing this as the little pieces you trim off can go flying. Once all the pieces were ready, it was time to start assembling the card. And as always, there was lots and lots of futzing around on my end, deciding just the right spot for each piece. As is often the case, I decided to make a few changes and I ended up creating a panel with this bread uh, ticking pattern using the ticking and grain stamp sets. And all I did was um, place the stamp in the paper in my stamping platform and I just inked this one little edge and stamped it and then flipped the paper around, stamped it again and just repeated that until I had it around all four edges and then I inked the edges with Walnut Stain Distress Ink. So I trimmed this down to four by five and three quarters and then I added some machine stitching around the edge, which you can't super see, but in person it definitely adds a nice extra bit of texture and interest. And I'm going to secure all those together and we'll be done. Here's a look at the completed card with all the mixed media goodness. From the Distress Mica Stain and Sparkle Grit Paste background, to the Sparkle Grit Paste and Rock Candy Glitter die cuts, and finally, the cracked glass in the specimen slide. Thanks so much for stopping by today, and I hope you enjoyed seeing how this mixed media Christmas card came together, along with learning the cracked glass effect. Until next time, stay crafty, my friend. Thanks so much for watching. I'm so grateful for you. I was wondering if you could do me a quick favor and subscribe to my channel or leave me a thumbs up or a comment. If you're feeling extra generous, I'd love for you to share about my channel with your friends. All of these things help out us YouTubers so much and it would mean so much to me to have your support.